Community Voices, Comedy Edition. Hello, and welcome to the Deadpan Comedy episode of Community Voices Comedic Writing. I'm your host, a Deadpan, Katie H., and here is the business I like to quickly cover at the opening of my workshop. If you're a first-time viewer, you're in luck. This workshop is a standalone series, and each one of these workshops covers its own genre and offers its own writing prompt around that genre to encourage participants at home, like you, to experience writing that genre in your own writing. Don't like this week's genre, but still want some creative prompts? Well, then check out some of our other episodes. We've already covered dark comedy, rom-com, surrealism, prop comedy, and other cool types of comedic writing that might be a little more your style. You can see all of our previous episodes available on our YouTube page. Plus, the link to all of our prompts from this workshop is in the program description this week, and it is always available on all of our links. And why am I inviting people to write their own scripts? Well, I'm hosting a very funny writing festival at the end of April, so you still have time to check out all of our prompts, write some funny scenes of your own, and then send them directly to me at kharoff at theoldglobe.org in order to be considered for that event. I hope you join us. Now, it is time for the deadpan fun. Today's episode, like I mentioned, is about writing deadpan comedy. So what is it? Here's a definition, and Wikipedia did a great job with this one. Deadpan, dry humor or dry wit. Humor is the deliberate display of emotional neutrality or no emotion, commonly as a form of comedic delivery to contrast with the ridiculousness or the absurdity of the subject matter. The delivery is meant to be blunt, ironic, laconic, or apparently unintentional with the ridiculousness or the absurdity of the subject matter. You have mostly seen this genre in modern examples through blended comedic genres, which means a piece is usually deadpan and something else, like deadpan and anecdotal, or deadpan and rom-com. Just the description of deadpan probably reminds you of a previous thing that we explored, which was juxtaposition. The juxtaposition of the situation, the outlandish situation, and the way that a person reacts to it with total neutral uh, emotion is a juxtaposition in comedy. There are some really pure examples of purely deadpan comedic writing from parody movies that were made popular with the very first event of this, which was the film Airplane. And all of the sequels, in fact, the actor Leslie Nielsen became famous for his ability to live stoically in the most out there of worlds. <laughs> Airplane specifically features a totally upside down and wacky world where the characters are forced to exist naturally, as though those circumstances were real. These movies are funny because of the deadpan work that the actors do in their incredibly upside down universes. Now, I want you to think of your own films or television that live seriously in an extremely out there universe. Can you think of any? Put them in our comments and share them with anybody watching that might inspire someone else. That's deadpan. Let's go ahead and jump into our reading for today so you can see some deadpan comedy in action. Today's piece is a favorite of mine. It's from A.B. Sedaris's Book of Liz, which is a fabulous play, and it features the wonderful Ariel Seiler and Luke Harvey Jacobs. Let's go say hi and jump into the reading. Hi, Ariel. Hi, Luke. Hello. Hey. How you doing, Ariel? I ho. I'm just, you know, surviving and somehow thriving. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Luke, how you doing today? Thank you for having me. I too am surviving and thriving. 
you both look great. Your skin looks great. You're you're looking good on camera. We're ready for this reading. Um, so I want to ask you both just, you know, your opinion of deadpan comedy. And do you have any deadpan comedy in your life that you know and love that folks at home might, you know, be able to help reference for the sake of this workshop? Ariel, you got any favorites? Uh, well, of course, Leslie Nielsen runs in my family's like legacy. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, I was a kid when Leslie was doing his thing, but we had Airplane and the Naked Guns on VHS. It was absolutely a, you know, sit down, we're watching this as a family kind of thing. So, and, you know, I, I, uh, although I don't have like all of the can't remember the movie like back to front like I absolutely remember cracking up as a kid and as you know and as a family like it's Leslie that's kind of was the thinking it's like it's Leslie Nielsen this is the guy yeah I mean I I talked about this a little earlier but it's kind of funny how that actor really held court with that genre in America, com American comedy for almost a decade. He made- yeah, he, really, a, he really found his niche. And and it's not, for whatever reason, he, it's not as popular now or in, in the pure deadpan style. Most deadpan comedy is mixed with something else. And usually that other genre, you know, takes the total reins from it. And, and, and deadpan is a secondary element. Luke, do you have something you enjoy in the deadpan world? Well, I think we're all living in a deadpan world right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Very cool. Um, we, I, I really enjoy like in the same kind of airplane absurdist wacky genre or, or in that vein, Top Secret was a great film. That one with, um, what's his name? I forget his name. That one guy. You the all guy. Know. That guy. The uh, guy. Not Val Kilmer. Well, the guy. No, Val Kilmer. It's Val Kilmer. It is Val Kilmer. <laughs> yeah, and it's very, it's very in that same kind of like wacky, absurdist vein as Airplane. But like the more, the more uh, recent uh, point of reference I like is At Home with Amy Sedaris, which is very apropos for what we're reading today. Mm -hmm. It's just she's got these little quirks that it's, it's meant to be your typical home and garden crafting show and all these crazy things happen that we're just supposed to accept. And it's great. Love it. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And when we talked earlier, Luke reminded me of that, the, that deadpan is actually pretty popular still in British comedy. So you probably can, you know, pick a couple of pieces in your mind from British comedy that is just pure deadpan. I think of like IT crowd and all of Monty Python's world was a very deadpan comedy. So lots of references and thank you both for sharing those with us. We're gonna jump into our reading, which I'm thrilled to join in today. We're all three going to play a part. Luke is playing Reverend Tollhouse. And Ariel is going to be reading Sister Elizabeth Donderstock. And I'm going to be jumping in with Brother Nathaniel Brightby. And you'll hear me on a little bit of stage directions as well. Are you all ready to jump in? OK, yes. Ariel, you and I will hide ourselves and let's get into this reading. The Book of Liz, scene one. Open at dawn in the private chambers of Reverend Tollhouse, who kneels on a custom-made cushion with his head bowed in prayer. As is the custom among squeamish men, he wears black pants coupled with a matching high-button jacket and a beard trimmed to run along his jawline. His people take great pride in their simplicity and the room should be as sparse and orderly as possible. Good morning, Savior. I am but flawed, but humbly beg you to accept the following compliments on my behalf. One, you are the Lord, our God, creator of everything, both known and unknown. That which we are, our being, is the work of you, and we exist grateful with the knowledge that only we can understand the true depths 
of your remarkability. Let it be known that you are splendid. Two, in honor of you and in mockery of your ways, we, your chosen people, shall shun the multitudes. Accomplishments and elements of design you will doubtlessly consider vulgar on the occasion of your return. You have a good eye, and thus so shall we. Three, though the world was created in but a brief seven days, we acknowledge that you are no stranger to hard work. Your example shall exist as our guidepost, and we offer our toil without thought of sacrifice with the hope. Lights dim and come back up. 37. In acknowledgement that the beard was your own invention and thereby glorious, we shall adopt it as our own and trim it only occasionally. 38. Oh, Reverend Tollhouse. I saw the light and... Uh, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I was on my way to the kitchens and like I said, I saw the light and thought maybe we are being visited by more of those hooligans. Yes, our mysterious friends. I think that's an Irish word, hooligan. I prefer vandals, which is Roman, but the papers said they were hooligan. You read the papers? Not me, personally. Oh, oh no, I'd never read the papers. Miss Foxley told me yesterday that. Yes, Miss Foxley. I've been giving the matter some thought and have decided it might be best if they sent someone else to collect the cheese balls. Someone else? But why? I just don't think she's a very good influence. But... Miss Foxley needs this job. I'm sure she can find something else. But she's got 12 Dobermans to support. 12! All by different fathers, I suppose. With all due respect, it's not our place to judge Reverend Tollhouse. She's a very nice young woman. She really is. Nice young woman. Don't wear tube tops. It's called a baby tea, not a tube top. I don't really see that it makes any difference. A baby tea has arms, while a tube top is more like a beer cozy. I'm unfamiliar with that term. It's a wraparound sheath people use to protect tankards of canned ale. I think you've made my point, sister. She's a bad influence and we'll be better off without her. Beer cozy indeed. She never smokes or torments the milk cows, and not once have I seen her dent a single order. That last one, the Catholic, he mauled them until they were practically flat. He had no respect for cheese balls, but Miss Fox... I don't want her around our kitchens. She's never snooped beyond the loading dock or asked for so much as a taste. Miss Foxley doesn't believe in round food. She told me herself. I've already drafted a letter to her superiors asking that they find a more suitable replacement. The matter has been decided, sister, so let us turn the page. I really think you're being unduly harsh, Reverend. Give it some thought and... I trust I'm not interrupting anything. Ah, oh, Brother Nathaniel Brightby, is it? What are you doing up so early? Is it early? I usually rise at around three to begin private worship before heading out to wake the livestock. I like the sound of that. Why sleep when there's work to be done? That's always been my philosophy. Praise be to God, someone with initiative. I don't think I've ever slept for more than three straight hours in my entire life, even when I was in that coma. No, sir, I don't need an hourglass to get me out of bed. Your reputation has preceded you, and I can see that it is well-deserved. If only there were more like you. I don't sleep much myself, never have. When I was young, I'm told my parents had to hit me over the head with a pickling or just to get me to take a nap. I've still got the lumps right there. Indeed. Uh, forgive me, Brother Brightby, and allow me to introduce Sister Donderstock. Donderstock, Elizabeth Donderstock. Good day to you, sir. Good day.
Brother Brightby is one of our new members, arrived last night from the parish in Dovetail. Oh, Dovetail. I hear it's lovely. I once saw a sketch of the meeting house and thought... I'm sorry I wasn't there last night to meet your carriage, Brother Brightby, but I want you to know that we are extremely honored to have you. Indeed. Thank you, Reverend Tollhouse. And let me say that I, in turn, am honored to be here. My most prized possession is a matchstick made by the brothers at Dovetail, and not a day goes by when I don't admire its craftsmanship. My God, the precision! <laughs> it's a terrible thing that's happened to your, to your community, a scandal. Yes, well, we've seen it happen in, in a number of parishes. The question is, how does one support oneself in a modern technological society that has no use for fresh clabbered buttermilk or a quartet of well-smithed horseshoes? Our napkin caddies and muffin nests were of the high highest quality, but what can one do when those infertile Koreans constantly nipping at the coattails? It's a tragedy, yes, but had they followed through with my suggestions, I dare say the community of Dovetail would still be thriving. You don't say. Hard work is admirable, but without the proper leadership, I'm afraid it counts for nothing. The wolf is at the door, Reverend, and it's best we update our thinking, thinking before he comes a-knockin'. Faith and commerce are not traditionally compatible. It's true. Yet still, I believe this marriage can and must be made. It is indeed a troubling issue. Why, if it weren't for our cheese balls, I don't know what we'd do. Oh, yes, the famous Cluster Haven cheese balls. You've done quite well with those, haven't you? Why, <laughs> thank you. It's not in my nature to boast. But yes, the cheese balls have allowed us to maintain a degree of privacy we like to think of as comfortable. I had one once, and I am still taken aback by the memory of its simplicity and perfection. It was, in a word, sublime. I invented the recipe myself and have been making them since I was 12. I'm afraid that modesty is not one of Sister Donderstock's finer virtues, Brother Brightby. Indeed not. Everybody lends a hand here at Cluster Haven, and none is more important than any other. All I meant was that... Well, I'd like to help put these hands to work as soon as possible. No, 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 no. You rest, Brother Brightby. You've had a long journey, but perhaps later on this morning I could show you around? I'd like that very much, Reverend. If possible, I'd also like to enlist your counsel on an idea I have for the upcoming chastity parade. By all means. I'll be in need of an assistant, and something tells me you, you're just the man for the job. But Reverend, what about me? I've already started rehearsing the virgins and have been stringing lutes for the past three years. I thought I was going to assist with this year's parade. We talked about it. Uh, Sister Donderstock, when I said I wanted to have you behind me, I meant that I needed you to push the float, not help plan the festivities. I honestly don't know where you get these fanciful ideas. <laughs> Fanciful. Why, you said yourself. If you're looking for something to do, you can polish the scallion rails on Brother Brightby's carriage. I'm sure they collected a great deal of dust on the long ride from Dovetail. That would be lovely. That would be lovely. Thank you, sister. My dander frock needs mending, and you've got your regular duties in the kitchen. That should keep you busy enough. Yes, Reverend. But... Perhaps before you give the good brother his tour, you and I could further this discuss the matter of Miss Foxley. Sister. Yes, Reverend. I'll I'll go get my Gouda scoop. So tell me, uh, brother Brightby, have you heard any news concerning the families of Zachary Branch or Josephus Tenderhook? To the best of my knowledge, they left Dovetail over a year ago, and I haven't heard much. 
the men walk off and lights fade. <laughs> End of scene. Thank you, Luke. You made it so real for us. So that's just the intro of this. And we did our best deadpan reading of it as much as possible. I wanted to laugh at tube top. I wanted to laugh at my character having a coma and, and not sleeping long in it. Yeah. <laughs> right. A lot of wacky reality. Yeah uh lives within this and we were just introduced to the the world of these folks which predominantly functions around making cheese balls uh, you definitely got to read the rest of this piece check it out it's fabulous i hope we uncovered a whole world of people who become the book of liz fans but i, I wanted to ask these two what they enjoyed about this reading. Luke, let's start with you this time. What do you enjoy about the Book of Liz? Well, I like that this world, they talk about the worlds of faith and commerce not traditionally being one and the same. And all of this is, is so silly and ridiculous. Like our whole world are these cheese balls, not God, but these cheese balls. And um, it all, all of this is so mon mundane. It's all such like silly, silly things surrounding life at the convent that is the most important thing. So it's, it's, it's very silly. And the main character, Elizabeth, is, was at first played by Amy, who if you, if you see her in anything, she always kinds of, kind of plays these d demure characters that are really anything but in the yeah. reality of mm -hmm. <laughs> they they play mm -hmm. demure but they're they're usually pretty out there grotesque she loves mm. the grotesque if you've ever seen strangers with candy you know what i mean yeah um, amy, amy sedaris absolutely and, and ariel what do you enjoy about this world that she's created as a performer i i I think one of the most fun aspects is normalizing the ridiculous. Um, I guess my question for y'all is, can deadpan live without absurdity? It, it has to have the absurd, yeah? I think definitely. Does it? I think for the, well. Yeah. No, actually, I was, you know, okay. before I got into this, I was thinking about the show Arrested Development quite a oh. bit. And Arrested Development to me lives in the deadpan world. Yeah. And it has one character who's like supremely deadpan, which is Michael. And then the rest yeah. of the characters are, are anything but. But that world as insane as it is, is, is outlandish as it is, it, there are people like that that I know. Oh yeah, and it's not, right. It's not yeah, really absurd. It's just it's just no, it's not. circumstances that they put themselves in, and yeah, yeah. but it is it's entirely. Like a, it's like a, a, a like a like a compounding of crazy circumstances, crazy circumstances that exist in the world, not usually all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it doesn't. Uh, like, yeah. Please go ahead. It doesn't have to be like Godzilla coming into the scene and people having tea. Like it could just be a, a stair car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what did yeah, you think so about this one? Oh. Yes, you. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. So yeah, so the normalization of, of the silly, um, but also uh, like you were talking about like these demure characters. I mean, part of the fun too is playing this character who's insecure, but like insecure within the ridiculousness. Like here's someone who doesn't need a, a, a time turner. What is it? A, a time turner? What is it? The hourglass? <laughs> the hourglass. <laughs> The coma? What am I saying? <laughs> but <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Oh God, this makes my day so much better. You have no. Oh, good. Okay. Ariel's still living. Yeah. In <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
but yeah so the, the fun part being like as a, as a performer like the normalizing of the silly like how ridiculous is it that this person lived in a coma you know and and it didn't even last that long and here you are as a performer still having to not only play that this is normal but also that you're in even insecure within yeah. this world that even you aren't as you know capable to be able to like only not even sleep in a coma yeah. so yeah so as a performer it's a lot of fun in that way and i 100 percent agree with that it's something that i kind of miss in the world of performance is to be able to play in these non-realistic worlds realistically it's very fun yeah. it's a lot of fun yes well i'm going to wrap up this conversation mm -hmm. with you too thank you again for joining us i love you i Thanks adore you me. you're fabulous say we'll all say goodbye and i'll get back to my big screen Thank you so much, Ariel and Luke, for showing deadpan comedic writing in action. I hope you all enjoyed the wacky world Sedaris creates in her book of Liz, and I highly recommend reading the rest of it if you haven't heard of this piece. The world she creates for her characters is truly unique, and the task of deadpan performances from its actors is one that will absolutely stretch performers, but when it's done well, it's a real treat to experience as an audience. What a wonderful opportunity to give that gift to an audience. So let us dig into the writing prompt for today so you can explore this enjoyable genre yourself. Once again, you're going to find today's prompt in the comment section of this video, and I'm going to go over it right now. First, I want you to brainstorm here on a chaotic alternate reality setting to place your scene. Provide this location a heightened given circumstance for your characters to live within. For example, in this world, it always rains lizards and people have to cope with that. Or maybe in this world, all of the characters are forced to live inside haunted houses of relatives that are always disappointed in them. I don't know, any kind of environment you'd like to set these characters in that's extreme and wacky and over the top, describe it here. And remember that this is an experiment. So don't be afraid to push yourself and raise those stakes of the situation to make your exploration action-packed and hilariously enjoyable. And then I want you to write your who your characters are. This is always important to know who these people are before going into the writing. One important defining characteristic of at least one of your characters in this environment is stoicism. Now, not all of these characters have to be deadpan. In fact, you could have a really out there character in juxtaposition with a totally stoic character, and that could be the way that you explore deadpan. Or just like we saw in Amy Sedaris's piece, all of the characters could be deadpan living within a chaotic and kind of alternative world. Whichever way you want to go with your characters is A-OK. -okay. And once you've made these decisions, I want you to dive right into writing your short deadpan script. And as always, if you like it or are just hoping to check in about it, email me at kharoff at theoldglobe.org. And we can chat about it and we can possibly and that it could possibly be part of that super funny writing presentation in April that I've been talking about. I love it. I can't wait to read all your dry humor, friends. And I'm happy that I got through this workshop without choking on this beard. Hallelujah. See you next time. Ha 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 ha. Community Voices. Comedy Edition.